My journey from becoming a paramedic to a full-time director of photography started when I was working in the field and more often than not, there seemed to be a lot of other productions going on that represented our industry that I felt didn't really represent what we did. And when you give that false expectation, I think a lot of people have an, an unreal understanding of what we do in the field. And I thought if there's only, if there's anybody that's going to do this correctly, you've got to have that perspective. So it's really about just having the right perspective that drove me to become a director of photography. Filmmaking became a passion of mine because I realized that there was a very low level of, of production value in our industry. Yes, Hollywood has a very high level of production value, but they've never represented us well. Internally, we've never looked at entertainment as a solution, as, as a means to get our message out. And I recognized that a few years ago and have been desperately trying to make sure that we move in that direction as First Responders Network. Production value is very important to me because if you don't offer the audience the chance to view it uh, in terms of the natural depth of fields and the, and the close immersive way that these new cameras offer, then you are not giving the true justice to what it's like to actually be on scene, what it's like to actually feel the emotions that these people are going through. So the problem I felt in the industry and in the, the big gaping hole was that production values, if you use the right tools in the right situation, you're gonna offer the audience a, a completely different experience uh, overall, emotionally and intellectually. I'm going into this production with a paramedic set of eyes. That's the one key element I think that I bring to the table in terms of these productions that I don't forget about when I'm on scene. Sure, I've got the camera with the great depth of field and everything else, but the, but the emotional attachment that I already have with that patient, knowing that they're going through a very rough time. They called 911 for a reason, or 999. And when that happens, you've gotta be sensitive to that environment. And if you're not, you're not gonna capture what you need to capture, or it's going to translate as you're just another production company trying to capture video. The first thing that you're gonna notice in all of our productions with regards to whether it has patient involvement or not is that you will see the genuine nature of which our hosts and our questioning, the way we, we dive into the topics that are important to us and how, how intensive we actually get about these subjects when it comes to making sure that we do the right thing for the patient. You'll immediately see the difference in how this was done compared to say paramedic 911 back in the 90s prior to HIPAA and, and the fly in the wall type shows. We're not that. We're not the ones looking for the sensationalism of the actual calls. We're trying to dive into the minds of the decision making that goes on and the emotions, not only with the patients, but within us. If I had an argument with my wife this morning and I come to work and I, and I translate that to the patients that I, that's, that's actually part of what makes me me. If I have a kid sick at home and I come uh, to work and I'm going to be uh, giving that to my patients, that's something mentally I think about because I don't want to be in a situation where I'm doing an injustice to, to my patients. So you will see that level of production thought go into all of our productions. When we're on the road with patients, 90% of our calls are not the trauma drama that you see on TV. What you see on TV is about five, maybe 10% of the real calls we go on. And it doesn't truly represent the overall compassion paramedics usually have for their patients. You know, me being a father of three kids, when you see me on scene with a child having a shortness of breath or an asthma attack, or a parent who has a brand new child who's having a seizure uh, for the first time, that's a very scary thing. But from a compassionate standpoint, I've been there. And so I knew how to calm 
that parent. And in a situation where you are only looking as a production um, or an executive producer trying to put together what you think the audience wants to see, there's levels of compassion that you're truly missing out if you don't take for granted the rest of what the kind of calls we go on. The First Responders Network is a collaboration uh, of about 15 paramedics and EMTs that are across the world, from Saudi Arabia, Australia, uh, all throughout the United States. We've all come together because we've had a passion to do something about the industry from the ground up. So, you know, boots on the ground, people who understand the field of what we're in and what we're doing, want to be able to offer an insight from all corners of the world into what our industry is all about. So there's podcasters, there's bloggers, there's video content creators, uh, all come together to create the kind of media that is virgin, if you will. It doesn't have an executive editor coming in and saying, okay, you're a little bit you know, rash on this side of the fence, or you know, we can't really say that. We've given carte blanche you know, uh, freedom to all of the content creators to create what they want. And what it's done is it's shown that our industry can police itself by the way in which we create this content. Where you live will determine if you live. That is just a fact. And unfortunately, that's what this series actually started re becoming the realization. You could be in London and know you're going to King's Hospital or London Chest and receiving the most appropriate uh, cardiac cath lab care. There's eight, eight uh, cath lab centers throughout London. I didn't know that until we just visited there. There's one in Oakland, for instance. There's a couple in San Francisco. When you consider the population and how that works, if you're far away from a cardiac cath lab, it's important to know how far you are away or if the EMS system that you're actually involved in, what is their plan? Because if they don't have a plan to take care of the one muscle that will die within minutes if you do not take, if you do not have the appropriate care, um, where you live does determine if you live. The First Responders Network was created not only for first responders to give them an insight into other areas of the, of the EMS or fire or police world, but it's also for the public. I think there's a public education opportunity here that even in our most recent web series, what we did is we created a web series about how heart attacks are, are handled within certain EMS systems. What was funny was what we were doing was creating it for first responders, but what we found out in Grand Rapids, Michigan, was there was a patient that had a cardiac issue that stumbled upon our content, didn't understand how her EMS system would actually react to her heart condition if she had to call 911. So she reached out to me, of which I happened to know a paramedic that was in Grand Rapids, Michigan, that actually worked for the 911 system and then in turn put them in, put those two together. And what ended up happening is now if that patient ever calls 911, we've got the, the full 12 lead, the latest 12 lead EKG, we've got our meds, we've got our health condition, everything pops up to the paramedic that's gonna be responding and we're fully aware of where she needs to go, what her main hospital is, the whole nine yards. So we can offer better patient care. That wouldn't have happened had it not been for an entertaining series that she stumbled upon, you know, on the web. It would not be possible without video to reach the masses. Podcasting is, is an example of a, of a media that people do absorb. You know, blogging, there's a, you know, the way in which I've seen the media absorbed on our website, a lot of people read. That's, that's the one of the number one things that are looked at on our site. The next one is podcasting. I think a lot of the reason that is is because people are able to drive and, and just put something on. So it's almost in the background or whatever. Uh, video is the third digested media format that we have. The difference is it's a much more emotional attachment to whatever that content is. So if we're talking heart attacks, if we're talking cardiac arrest, if we're talking therapeutic hypothermia to have the, the least neurological deficits from your patients, uh, when you see 
patients' families responding to the kind of care that they've received and how well that patient did because of the advanced care that we're now able to give, that changes lives.